All right, I'm back, and we're continuing our discussion related to the atomic uh, nature of matter. Uh, we've learned about the first uh, subatomic particle discovered, the electron. Do you remember by who? That's right, J.J. Thompson discovered it had a negative charge and was approximately 2,000 times smaller than the smallest element, hydrogen. Um, he then discovered the proton, which has a mass about 2,000 times bigger than um, an electron, or about the same size as a hydrogen atom. Uh, the magnitude of the charge for a proton is identical to the magnitude of the charge of an electron, but their signs are opposite. So where an electron is negative, protons have a positive charge. Uh, we also talked about the gold foil experiment um, by Ernest Rutherford, and we found that matter is composed mainly of empty space. There's a huge distance between uh, the uh, nuclei of atom, and nuclei, of course, make up most of the mass of an atom. And if there's a huge distance between them, uh, that means that matter would be mainly empty space. That space between them does have electrons, and remember, electrons are very, very small. Now, um, James Chadwick in 1932 found a third subatomic particle. It was speculated and theorized that it existed, but it wasn't until 1932 that James Chadwick discovered this third subatomic particle. He found high energy particles with no charge and essentially the same mass as a proton. So much larger than an electron, about the same size as a proton. These particles are known as neutrons. And they're symbolized by the lowercase letter n with a, a zero up here denoting the fact that they don't have a charge. So neutrons about the same mass as a proton and they do not have a charge. So neutrons and protons are now know, uh, known to be made up in smaller particles that we don't worry about at this level. Okay? All right. Now, J.J. Thompson again, while working with neon, he observed that there were actually two different kinds of neon atoms. If you remember, Dalton said atoms of the same element were identical to each other. Hmm. Well, Thompson found that neon atoms aren't, aren't completely identical to each other. They were exactly alike chemically, but their mass was different. Now, atoms of the same element that have a different mass are called isotopes. Isotopes. Isotopes have the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. So we can identify an atom by the number of protons it has, but the number of neutrons it has may be different between atoms of the same element. Let me give you a couple of examples. There are three isotopes of hydrogen, protium, deuterium, and tritium. Now, they're hydrogen atoms, so they have to have the same number of protons. And hydrogen has one proton. Remember, it's the simplest of all elements. One proton. So all of these isotopes have the same number of protons. Now, protium, by far and away the most common isotope of hydrogen, doesn't have any neutrons at all. Now, the mass number of an element is simply the sum of the protons and the neutrons. That means we're going to add these two guys together. So 1 plus 0 would give me a mass number of 1 for an isotope of protium. Deuterium is another isotope of hydrogen. It has to have the same number of protons. So it has 1, but deuterium has, two, has 1 neutron. So the mass of deuterium is 1 plus 1, or it has a mass number of 2. And finally, the third isotope of hydrogen is tritium. It has one proton. Of course, it has to have one proton because it's hydrogen. But it has two neutrons. So its mass would be 1 plus 2, or a mass number of 3. Now, when you look at the periodic table for the element hydrogen, you'll, of course, see its symbol. And you will see a whole number, an integer. That integer is called the atomic number, and the atomic number represents the number of protons. 
So the atomic number is the integer. It's a whole number written usually above the symbol of the element, and that represents the number of protons in a nucleus of that atom. Now the atomic mass, we're going to get to that in a little bit um, and on this video, but let me define it for you right now. The atomic mass is the average mass of an element's isotopes. So we take all other isotopes and we find their average mass. Now we don't do that by simply adding up the masses and dividing by the number of isotopes. It's a little bit more complicated than that. But for right now, the average atomic or the atomic mass, excuse me, is the average mass of all of that element's isotopes. And that brings us to the mass number. Remember what the mass number was? Yeah, we were doing it right here, right? The mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So remember, we found the mass of protium to be 1. That's 1 proton plus 0 neutrons. The mass of tritium turned out to be 3. That was 1 proton plus 2 neutrons. So a mass number is the number of protons and neutrons. Now, the average atomic mass is usually written below the symbol of an element, and it's a decimal quantity. So the average mass of a hydrogen atom is 1.008, and we use the term atomic mass units. So by showing that the mass is really, really close to 1, doesn't that mean that most of the isotopes of hydrogen have to have a mass of 1? So protium is the most common isotope of hydrogen. Here, let's do another example or two. Um, there are three common isotopes of potassium. Potassium-39, potassium-40, and potassium-41. Now, they're all potassium. In fact, let me show you on the periodic table the uh, element potassium. So let's find it quickly. And potassium is right here. So we'll look at this a little bit sideways. Hopefully you can do that with me. And you see that integer right there? That whole number is 19. That's the atomic number. This number down here is the average atomic mass. That's the average mass of all of the isotopes of potassium. It's pretty close to 39. Okay? So, with that in mind, let's go back to where we were. And we have potassium 39, potassium 40, and potassium 41. They all have 19 protons because that's the atomic number of potassium, 19. However, their masses are different. That means they have a different number of neutrons. So, potassium 39 has 20 neutrons. Notice that the atomic number, the number of protons, plus the number of neutrons will give us the atomic number. Now, it also has 19 electrons. Now, that should make sense. The number of protons and the number of electrons for a neutral atom should always equal each other. We have to have the same number of positives as we do negatives. Now, potassium-40, see it's still potassium, so we still have 19 neutrons, or excuse me, 19 protons, but this guy has 21 neutrons. So 19 plus 21, that's where I get my 40, okay, the sum of those two numbers. And once again, the number of protons and the number of electrons in a neutral atom have to be the same. And finally, the third isotope of potassium is potassium-41. has to have 19 protons or else it would not be potassium. It has 22 neutrons. 19 plus 22 gives me the atomic number, or excuse me, the mass number of 41. And of course, once again, the number of protons and electrons and a neutral atom equal each other. Now, what do you think is the most abundant isotope of potassium? 39, 40, or 41? Let's go back and look at the periodic table, okay? Oop. Let's go to page 1, and we'll look at the periodic table again. We'll find potassium, and you notice that the average atomic mass is really, really close to 39. So doesn't that mean that the most abundant isotope of potassium probably has a mass of close to 39? So, oops, let's go back here. And so I would say that this 
is by far and away the most abundant isotope of potassium. All right, why don't you take a minute and do it for these two isotopes of copper? Now, what I've done here is I've given you the mass number in the upper left-hand corner and the atomic number in the lower right-hand corner. With that information, take a second and fill out this chart over here. Tell me how many protons, neutrons, and electrons copper 63 has and copper 65 has. So pause the video now and do that. When you're done, to turn it back on and we'll see how you did. Okay, welcome back. So, how many protons did you say copper 63 had? Well, the atomic number, remember, is the number of protons. And the atomic number for both of these is 29. So it has 29 protons. And copper 65 must have 29 protons because they are both atoms of copper. Now, let's do the electrons next because they're the easiest. Remember, in a neutral atom, the number of positives and negatives have to be the same. So if I have 29 protons, that means this guy will have 29 electrons. And if this has 29 protons, this will have 29 electrons. Remember, isotopes differ in their number of neutrons. The protons and electrons are going to be the same so long as it's a neutral atom. So how do we find the number of neutrons? Well, some students say, oh, it must be 63 because I haven't used the number 63 yet um, by filling out this chart. It's not how you do it. Remember, if I take the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, that will equal the mass number. Now, the mass number of copper 63 is 63. Don't we know it has 29 protons? So, how many neutrons does it have to have in order for the mass number to equal 63? Very good. If you said 34, because 29 plus 34 equals 63, you are correct. Copper 63 has 34 neutrons. Okay, let's do it for copper 65. The mass number obviously is 65. It has 29 protons. So, how many neutrons must it have? That's correct. If you said 36, because 36 plus 29 gives me the total, you are correct. So, does your chart look like mine? If it does, give yourself a little pat on the back. Good work. You can do any of these if you can just do the example that I finished up. All right. So, to wrap up today, let's go ahead and take a minute and finish this chart here. Complete this chart for me. Now, you're going to have to use your periodic table for this, but go ahead and pause the video now. See if you can figure out the element, if it's missing, the atomic number, if it's missing, the number of protons, and the number of electrons. And then I'm going to add something here. Uh, let's go ahead and find the, uh, let's see if we have the atomic number, the protons. Let's find... No, we'll just leave it at this. We'll see if you can do this chart. Okay, so pause it, and then come back to me. Okay, welcome back. So here we are. We have the element lead. Its atomic number is 82. So let's go ahead and find atomic... Uh, let's go ahead and find lead on our periodic table. So let's see. Lead. So, oh, so let's try to move this guy for us. Atomic number 82 is right there. So there is lead. Okay? Now, if its atomic number is 82, doesn't that mean it has 82 protons? So let's go ahead and fill that in. So let's go to the last page we were just on. Nope, that's the wrong page. Sorry. Let's go to page 27. I think that's where we are. Nope. Let's go back this way. All right. So the number of protons would be 82. Now, if it has 82 protons, that means it has 82 positive charges. How many electrons must it have? Yeah, if you said 82, that is correct. All right, what if I gave you the number of protons? Could we fill anything else out? Well, if it has 8 protons and it's neutral, doesn't then have to have 8 electrons? And if it has 8 protons, isn't, it atomic, isn't its atomic number 8? So now let's look on the periodic table and see if we can find atomic number 8. So, let's see, we have three, four, five, six, seven. Here we go. Here's atomic number eight. Looks like oxygen is the one with eight protons. So, let's go 
to, uh, oops, I did that again. Let's go to oxygen, or let's fill in oxygen on our chart here. So if it has an atomic number of eight, we know the element is O, oxygen. All right, if it has 30 electrons, that's right, it has 30 protons. If it has 30 protons, that means its atomic number is 30. So let's go ahead and find the element that has the atomic number of 30. So it looks like the atomic number of 30 is right there. It looks like zinc has 30 protons. So let's go ahead and fill that in. For zinc, Z, oops, Z, N would be the symbol for the element zinc. Now, to find the number of neutrons here, wouldn't I have to give you the mass number, which I didn't do. So on this chart, we can't find the number of neutrons. All right, then there's a summary of uh, the properties of the subatomic sub particles. Go ahead and review this at your leisure. Make sure you know their symbol. Make sure you know their relative mass. That means their mass compared to each other. So if I call a proton, if I say a proton has a mass of one, a neutron would have the same mass because they have the identical, practically the identical mass. However, if you remember, electrons are 1837 times smaller. They rounded it off to 1840, so it's 1 1840th the mass of a proton. Okay? All right, the next time we see each other, we're going to calculate something called average atomic mass. That's that decimal number that we usually see written below the symbol of the element on the periodic table. All right, thanks for being with me. Bye-bye.